Hello and welcome to Fix More Waste Less, where I try to fix broken electronics and keep them out of the landfill. Today we have a PS2 Slim with no power. It doesn't have a red light at all. I've already taken it apart and if you would like to see how that's done, please check out one of my other videos. But today we're going to focus on the fix. And after testing out all of the fuses, I found that there are these two fuses here, the PS4 and PS5, that are not working. They no longer have continuity across them, so we're going to replace those. Now the first thing to do is remove the bad fuse with my soldering iron and then it can be done by just touching the sides with the hot iron and melt the solder and remove it. Then I can replace it with a new fuse I have and get it out of this little container. It's a very small fuse in this case but it is the same rating so it will work. Um, let's add some Let's see, add some flux to the solder joints here to help it all flow well. Uh, now, like I said, this fuse does look to be about a size too small for this spot, but I think it should work as long as the solder is making a good connection with the fuse and the joint. And let's, uh, let's tap it here, and there we go. That looks to be... Pretty good connection there, and we'll do the other side as well. And yeah, all right, that seems to be good. We can uh, we can check it with a multimeter, and yeah, see that it is making a connection. And this PS5 one is not good. Now I just need to remove the other fuse, PS5 in this case, and. Touch the soldering iron there to melt the solder and get it removed without destroying anything. And we can clean that up with some IPA. These fuses do seem to be a pretty common fault with the PS2s and mostly the Slims, really. The good news is that they're not particularly hard to replace, as you can see, but the difficulty comes from actually sourcing the fuses. The board uses a lot of different sized fuses. You can't just assume that any old you know, SMD fuse will work. You have to really check the fuse rating and replace as appropriate. Now I source my fuses from AliExpress and the upside is they're cheap off there and the downside is the shipping time. It takes weeks or more to get anything from AliExpress, but it's still a better deal than overpaying for 30 cent fuse and I certainly wouldn't recommend just bridging the fuses. You know, they're in place for a reason and as evident by the fact that they keep blowing on these machines, they're doing some kind of job and keeping the rest of the console safe. All right, and the fuse I actually have on hand for this rating is I think a size too big and unfortunately, unlike putting a smaller fuse in here, it's gonna be pretty hard to connect this fuse to the two joints that it needs, so I'm going to have to probably get another fuse from AliExpress, which means it'll take a few more weeks to finish this. <laughs> Alright, and I did find uh, finally get new fuses in, um, so I can replace that PS5 fuse that's missing. And we see here that it is probably the same size as the other one, but it fits this location which is nice. Now, I don't know why I keep finding these consoles with blown fuses. I don't know if it's just age and they're deteriorating, if there were you know, electric surges that blew the fuses. It's possible that with these slims, at least the early versions, the 70,000 versions that required an external brick that someone just plugged in the wrong supply. I mean, these require eight and a half volts, but it's possible someone had a power supply they thought would work because it had the same connector but you know it was really 10 volts or 12 volts and that blew something but it's also possible bugs cause the issue i've seen enough consoles infested with bugs to know that they can easily short two points and cause a surge that blows a fuse uh, we're always we're always hoping that it's something external like that that caused the issue and not some other error on the board that could continue to reoccur and constantly blow fuses because that would make the repair more difficult. All 
That's secure. Let's flip the board around. Okay, good. And that's secure. Now we've got the console put back together enough to test. Let's plug it in and we've got a red light there, which is a good sign and it powers on, which is also very, very nice. Um, and the fan's spinning, so that's good. All right, let's see if the disk drive wants to respond. We need to activate these two switches here on the console and it should move the drive, but no, it doesn't, it doesn't want to do anything. So there's still some issue going on here, which means we need to get it back apart. So with the meter in continuity mode where it beeps, we can test the left side and we have a connection there and, and it's not looking like it. Okay. That's not giving us anything. Okay. So this switch works by creating a connection between the left side and the right side when the switch is pressed. So I can put my leads on either side. And if I press the switch, it should beep telling me there's a connection, but it doesn't. So that tells me that something else is going on with this switch. Now under the microscope, it looks like the right side doesn't have the best connection with the board. So I'm going to try to reflow the joint just to see if that can help. We can always remove the switch and bypass this whole thing if it needs to, but I do like to keep things as original as I can, if possible. All right, just adding a little bit of solder to these. I don't know if that's gonna do anything, but we can hope. Okay, so now that I've added a bit of solder to these joints, let's see if that gives us any better readings on our meter. And, and, and still not, not giving us anything. So and this is just feels loose. So, all right, I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to remove this actually, just take this off. Uh, if it wants, you know, if it wants to be a problem, we'll just take it off. Um, so let's see if we can pry it off with just heating those joints and melting the solder should help just pull it off, but it's not wanting to come. So we're going to, uh, Okay, I don't want to pull too hard, so I'm going to actually use a solder wick to remove the um, solder at that joint just to help get this piece off. Now, you wouldn't want to use a hot air gun here because that's a plastic connector and the hot air would more than likely melt that and that would just cause even more problems. So, uh, you do want to be careful about that. And... Uh, I does so much better when you add some flux to it to help wick it away. And let's do the left side as well. Okay, and that looks like we've got most of the right side up. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. 
Let's flip it around and try and get the left side. Alright. And oh. Alright, yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's how it should be done. Just touching it melts the solder and it comes right off. That's very nice. Except for that one pad. It looks a bit sketchy. Now let's clean that with some IPA. Clean that up and yeah. Yeah, it looks like a rip pad for sure. Um, but I think it's okay. I hope it's okay. <laughs> so that switch works by creating, yeah, it's not good. Okay. Um, yeah, that, uh, switch works by creating a connection between, you know, the left side and the right side here. And you can see the left side's connected with that little trace and the right side's connected. Well, the bottom pad was connected to the top pad with that little trace. And then it goes along this path to some chip somewhere that one, the button's pushed and it, makes that connection between the left and right side. It tells the PS2 that the lid is, is closed, or at least this part of the lid's closed. And so it will read, but all we need to really do is create a connection between any pad on the left and this pad that remains on the right. And it'll do the same job. And it'll think that the switch is activated, meaning it only needs the front switch to activate when the lid closes and that will trigger the disk drive to work. So we're gonna create a connection here using a bit of wire, start cleaning this up. And then we'll add some, come in with our flux. Oof, yeah, that pad is gonna come up pretty soon. So we're gonna get this out of the way. So we'll start with some flux and put the picture back in the camera. And then we can tend the pads. And perfect. Now we just need to attach a wire to both of those pads. And it should be ready to go. So. This is enameled wire, so we'll have to burn off a little bit of the enamel in order for it to stick. So there we go, and there we go. And same for this side. Burn off a little bit of that enamel and get it to stick to this part here. Come on. There we go. Um, there we go. Yeah. Perfect. And then just take your tweezers and wiggle this wire back and forth to get it to break. And we can test the connect. And then we can test the connection. There we go. Yeah, so left and right side are connected good. All right, and here we are with the console back in the case, ready to test it out. And so we still have the red light, which is good. And we have a green light, it powers on. Press this front button and the disk drive will activate and it does. It's a bit weird, but I think that back ribbon, it's acting a bit weird, but I think that back ribbon cable wasn't very secure when I attached everything and and yeah, it went ahead and popped out. So I think that's really the only issue. It's nothing serious. So I will test this out some more and make sure it's fully working and reading discs and such. Then clean it out because it's definitely got some dirt and other buildup around it. But for now, I'm gonna end the video. I hope you learned something useful from it and I hope it helps you in your endeavor to fix your PS2 if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer them. If you liked the video, then please 
like the video and consider subscribing because I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.